What's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're doing something a little different. We're sitting down with some of our friends and we're just talking about what's going on today. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment below. Okay? Definitely hit that bell so you can get the notifications. I'm Rachel, this is Jordan, this is Jesse, Nico, and Alex. Alright, so we're just going to talk about what's been going on, our feelings, just have like a discussion. Feel free to comment down below, let us know what you're thinking, how are you feeling? So, um, the first thing is, is basically, what does um, Black Lives Matter mean to us? And just as like, I guess as a community, a lot of people see the hashtag Black Lives Matter, and it, it to me, I get a lot, like I'm scrolling through the comments on Facebook and Twitter and, you know, social media, which is going crazy right now, but it's just, a lot of people are saying in those comments, like, what about all lives? And it doesn't necessarily, we're not trying to say, hey, it's only black lives that matter, right? We're trying to say that you know, uh, the voice for black people, the voice for people of color, you know, it's just not being heard, right? So it's, it's not necessarily that it's particular one race or people of color that, that the lives matter there. It's just a fact that there is a voice now, being that the time that we're in and the situation is, you know, our voices need to be heard. And there's a, there's the time is now for, uh, us to actually be able to hear voices and hear what people's thoughts are and hear discussions of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, um, what does it necessarily mean to be racial? Or um, pretty much just what, what you said. The best way I can explain it is I saw a post on social media and someone mm -hmm. compared it to like if your house is on fire. The firefighters are going to come and they're going to pay attention to your house because your house is on fire. There's no need for them to hose down all the houses on that street. It's not saying your house isn't important. It's just saying that this house is on fire, so we're gonna put the fire out of this house. That's just the easiest way I think I can explain it. I heard a similar um, ex or explanation yeah. of it. Uh, so pretty much, if you're at a public swimming pool mm -hmm. and you see somebody drowning, or if I'm a lifeguard, I see somebody drowning, I'm going to save that person, right? right? So if somebody's yelling, I'm drowning, I'm drowning, I'm going to get you. Doesn't mean nobody else in this pool doesn't need help or whatever the case may be. But this is the person in dire need right now. Mm -hmm. This is essentially the person we need to help. Right. So that's, and then just historically, like, right. we, hey, this is going on, and we haven't been hurt. Um, to me, um, it's, it's, it's some of the same stuff, but. When I hear, like, when somebody asks me, what does Black Lives Matter mean to me? I think, like, equal rights, you know what I'm saying? Like, for, uh, like, equal lives, almost. Like, I have to worry about, you know, a, a cop pulling me over just because of the color of my skin or stopping me and asking me questions just because of the way I look and stuff like that. And I feel like that is the separation. You know, that is what's, what we're trying to get everyone to see and feel us when we say Black Lives Matter. Um, so that's my piece on it. Yeah. Right, so basically everything y'all said, but yeah. the way I try to explain it is like, it's just putting a spotlight on the voices that aren't being heard and the problems that aren't being highlighted, right. which that pertain to specifically black people right now, not necessarily everybody else in the world, so. Yeah. Right. And and just kind of to to kind of go into what you just said, um, the spotlight. It's funny because like right now people are like, it's weird because of the joy, the George Floyd incident that happened. Things like this have been happening for years, right. years. But why now is it such um, like? Why is so much attention being drawn towards, you know, that incident with the incident with Brown and Taylor? You know, why now? And to me, why why I think it's it's happening now is just because 
the time and situation of all of the events that are happening. Right. You know, everybody's at home now because of COVID. You know, there's not a lot. Things have just slowed down drastically. Right. And then the things like you would hear about, you know, somebody being shot by a police officer or, you know, just misuse of conduct there or any of those events, people look over it in the media. Um, but now it's just like, okay, I got time to sit down and digest some of it and actually see, wow, this is really happening. So um, I think just because of the timing we're in, and, and that's like you're saying, that, that spotlight. So the spotlight is, is necessarily like shining on, you know, the community. Like black people are fed up. We're fed up with Angry. what keeps yeah. going on. Like it's not necessarily like, again, it's nothing to do with, you know, white people. We don't. That, that has nothing to do with anything. It's just the fact that now is the time for our platform, our voices to be heard. Mm -hmm. And we want it to be heard. We want something to be done. Yeah. Right? So, how do you guys I think, um, honestly, to, to piggyback off what you said uh, with the COVID thing, and I, I, I think black people, we, we, we've been aware, we've been woke, right? But a lot of uh, different people have been at home and they, they, they have not realized what we usually go through on a daily basis, mm -hmm. right? Daily and so daily. now more people is getting the opportunity to see like, wow, this is this is for real, you know? And and now that we have, you know, more people because when I when I was in the rallies and stuff like that, it was black, whites, all everyone's there, there. You know? And I think that now everyone's seeing like, oh wait, this is actually a big problem, right? So now we got now we got more participation. You know, black people been woke on. We we know how right. we feel, right? Oh, yeah. And I, for for example, I, I read a post on Twitter that said uh, uh, something like it was a, a white lady, and she was saying that it was her uh, and a and a tall black guy. He had on uh, shorts and a bandana. Uh, looked like he had just left the gym from working out, and they both uh, exited the store at the same time, and the buzzer went off. Right? I read that yeah. yeah. And so and so. She said that the, the store clerk stopped the guy, but didn't stop her, the, the black guy, but didn't stop her. And so she asked him, like, do you want to check my purse? He said, oh, no, you're fine. You go ahead. But she stopped him and said, let me check your bags, your receipt and stuff yeah. like that. Right. And so when they left out the store, uh, they, the, the uh, lady and the black guy had a conversation and he basically asked her, he told her, thank you and stuff like that. And he asked her. Now, do you think, you know, a few months from now, would you have realized that or yeah. noticed that, mm -hmm. right? And, oh, yeah. yeah, and she's like, you know what? <laughs> no. Honestly, no, I wouldn't yeah. have. You know what I'm saying? So this, the, the, the COVID, I think it, it had a lot of uh, bad impacts, but it had a lot of positive impacts too. And I think that spotlight thing, it helped everyone see, like, okay, yeah, this is an actual problem. Yeah. I think I think honestly it was how that video what happened in that video that mobilized everybody. Right. You know, him calling out for his mother. Yeah. <clears throat> like, I don't care who you are, what yeah. race, what national none of that. Yeah. You hear your son or somebody call out for their mom who who it's not there anymore. Yeah. A grown it's man. Like a grown yeah. man. Yeah. Like a yeah. And that's what breaks a lot of people's heart. You're a grown man calling for your mom yeah. because you're terrified, you're scared, and every second of your life is slipping away from you. Mm -hmm. Every second, right? So just that. And um, did, you, did any of you guys see the Chappelle special that he dropped, 846? <laughs> no, I, I saw some of it. My friend told me to watch yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> he, 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 he kind of just, just, to talk about it a little bit he kind of explained like every mother mobilized at that moment hearing him say that mm -hmm. you know because it's like that's heartbreaking yeah. grown man and he, this is not no small guy calling for his right mom yeah. it's, a, it's a bars guy yeah. you know um calling for his mom and then the non shaman cop just nailing on his neck right like usually you can clip different things you have eight minutes and 46 seconds of seeing no. Him not moving. Yeah. You have another officer just standing over there. Yeah. So when I think a spotlight's on it because of the how intense that whole situation was, and now the people who are white, Asian, who aren't brown or black or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, 
maybe they're not bullshitting. Like, maybe right. they're telling the truth, you know, because we just seen something <laughs> just happen. Like, right. this dude can't, he's saying he can't breathe. Why are you still on him? Yeah. And then there was an argument before, like, other photos came out, like, that there's only one guy there. And then it's a shot of behind scenes in this. Yeah. Three of them. <laughs> Three of them. Yeah. On yeah. him at one time. Cool. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. like yeah. Yeah, they'll take care of it. That's the thing. The media yeah. take care of it. They'll they'll find everything that. Oh, right. I mean, they, they got every angle. They got yeah. from getting them out of the car. They got them from when they put him down on the ground to him being there. You know, people saying like, okay, he's he's clearly not breathing. You know, he's unconscious at this point. He didn't budge. It's it's just yeah, it was chilling just to gruesome. watch. Like if you a person like me, like. I like to look at details, and I was mm -hmm. just looking at his eyes. Yeah. And you, I swear, you can see his soul leave his body. Right. Really. And that was like, like take his last breath. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's like, bro, like, how can't you feel for it? If you right. can't feel for that video, once again, I will go watch that Chappelle special. It's not meant to be funny. Right. Necessarily, it's a talk piece. Yeah. Um, because he's stuff. known for like comedy. Like, hey. <laughs> when I think of Dave Chappelle, it's like, hey, I'll show. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's good that he, he was actually, you know, actually talking out and being serious. Not necessarily Dave Chappelle is not serious, but, you know, it, it was a serious matter. Yeah. He, and he's he, using his platform, yeah, more yeah. importantly. He said something dope, like, because a lot of people's like, hurry up and say something, hurry up. He's like, no, I'm letting the streets talk for me. Like, mm -hmm. that, that was so dope because it's like, I don't know why we always look to celebrities yeah. right. to mm -hmm. say something. One celebrity could make a change, right. but millions of people at once can make a bigger change. Exactly. That's just to me. You know, that could be different for everybody. Right. Um, another thing that I wanted to definitely touch on was, uh, as like people, some people are, I guess you could still be quarantined. It's like everyone's towns or whatever's open back up. Some people are turning back to work or. If you're essential, you have not been off. You've been working, like I. Um, I want to talk in. about, huh? Don't rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me, I'm not. <laughs> um, I want to definitely talk about how you like how to like you've been professional in the workplace. Like I think that is the most challenging thing that mm. I've been faced with. Is like through it all, I have to main maintain a professional like attitude. Um, I was telling. Nico earlier like when this all started I felt so empowered I felt so like oh my god yeah everybody's posting the support like you know everything I was like really like on the up about it and I actually had someone from my small group saying like she felt angry and I was like no I'm not even angry like I feel like sad maybe but then like as the time has gone on and as I've gone to work and been around my co-workers and I will say this, it's only five people that are black in the day shift at my job. So that speaks a lot. And all five of us are never working the same shift. Let me just say that. So at most, it might be three of us at most. Um, but so everybody else is white. And I'll just say it is hard to come into work each day and to take care of people and then hear your coworkers they have smart remarks or they say a lot of ignorant comments and if I say something or if I react to it I would be viewed as like I can't control my emotion or I'm angry they love the narrative of an angry black woman so it's like don't give in don't give in walk away but then part of me is like no like I want to challenge you so I did ask some challenging questions and I could tell people were uncomfortable and I mean honestly I didn't care <laughs> I was like so I'm just curious like why haven't you posted anything why haven't you spoken out yeah. and the girl was just like I don't get what's the point of posting 10 things like what is that going to do and I was like I don't need you to post 10 things one post and it's not even about a number like I don't need you to meet a quota it's just like you speaking out and saying something at least do that and then as the conversation was going on, I was just like, you know what? She doesn't get it. Like, I'm not going to go back and forth because at this point I was definitely getting upset. And it was just like, I see you. I hear you. I know how I am with you now. So it's just like, it sucks because you like, should I have expectations? Should I not? And then you just 
still gotta go back to work and maintain somewhat a respect level, a professional attitude around your patients. It it's hard. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else is like. Oh, I've been having. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So not only am I the only black black person mm -hmm. at work, ninety percent of the time, I'm the only black woman at mm. work. That's too Period. Oh, yeah. Right. So yeah. yeah. So when this all first started, it was like everybody was just coming in with their opinions about yes. it that were not necessarily asked for it's nice to have your own opinions but not necessarily when it's in an ignorant opinion right just read the situation it's just right. in, like <laughs> i don't know it was just like the small comments like oh I, i'm i'm scared to do this being be, they said like okay so <laughs> They were telling a story about how years and years ago where there was a riot, I think in Cincinnati, um, mm -hmm. yeah. they were driving and somebody threw a brick in his window and he called it driving while white is what he said. And they were just harping oh, on wow. it all day saying, said driving while white. And I was like, wow, Imagine like don't let them white. figure out how it feels to be black. Cause they're yeah. going to be <laughs> shocked yeah. about it. They're going to be shocked. And so that it's been kind of rough and I feel so I've always grown up around white people. I went to private school, danced at a white studio and even now I'm on like a white team. Um, and I always have felt kind of like to not speak up for myself. Right. So it's kind of hard going in a professional environment with people who I see all the time that are showing me different sides yeah. of them that it's like interesting to hear their opinions about it um that don't necessarily align with my view actual view of mm -hmm. it um and not feel comfortable enough to say something about right. it like i have been using this time to try to educate my white friends and allies as much as i can but it's some people where it's like you just feel like you can't yeah. say anything to them because they won't understand it they're gonna come mm -hmm. back at you with something that's gonna make you probably hurt even more than you already are right. about the situation. So. I, I think they respond more to, they, they don't listen. Like it, yeah. it's, it's just because they think everything you're saying is an attack on them necessarily. Yeah. So when yeah. you talk about white privilege, when you talk about police, police brutality, they think it's a direct attack on them. <coughs> and that's not the case. It's, it's on a macro level, not a micro level. And I think people are getting that twisted. Yeah. For instance, like similar situation growing up, predominantly white, you see more things, more overt racism than covert racism versus growing up black. But it's mm -hmm. their own conditioning and everything like that. So now with their conditioning, you're trying to explain, hey, this is what happened to me, you know? And they, they don't want to hear it because they didn't experience it. Right. It's hard to show somebody your own pain when they would never experience it at exactly. all. Exactly. You know. I will say that um, my teammates, things like that, there have been a good amount of them that have stepped up mm -hmm. and came to me and asked me like how I felt about it, mm -hmm. um, or just wanted to know more about it, but still understand that they will never know how it really feels. Mm -hmm. But they want to be like educated on the matter and try to understand things more because like we said this has been going on for a lot longer than just may 25th yes. right. so a lot longer yeah I, I think it's people you gotta get people to understand like the proximity of slavery and civil rights like people's grandparents dealt with segregation right. yes. <laughs> like, some, some parents some people got old parents yeah, yeah. I mean, 60 he he what was it the segregation ended around 1964 yeah uh he was born 59 so he was pretty young but he, he experienced dr yeah. martin luther king and everything like that yeah. and then so so you have people's grandparents who dealt with segregation and those people's grandparents the slavery yeah. right it's it's, exactly. it's not far away from no, it's not far it's not far, it's away, not away, far away when you look at it like, right. yeah right. Right. i mean so. you can go certain parts in the u.s and go and see plantations and visit oh, right. you know what i'm saying like there's a tree in alabama to this day that has a sign that says a hanging tree bro no. like they haven't burned that tree down yet no <laughs> it's still there taking a trip to alabama <laughs> it's crazy yeah but in in the kind of like piggyback on what you guys were saying i guess um you know the, the church sermon that we were watching on tv mm -hmm. um 
it was just a really good analogy of you know why people just don't understand or get it like predominantly the world is made of what a right-handed person mm -hmm. like people are the majority of people are right-handed mm -hmm. you're born right you're going to throw right-handed like everything's made for a right-handed person in, right. in the world so if you know you bring a left-handed person into the world things are different for them right yeah. they don't have the same opportunity like when you go when they go sit in a desk mm -hmm. like a desk is built for like you right. majority right. of people right. being right yeah, yeah. the right handed cool. it's not built for a left -hand. so they gotta adjust you know adapt and adjust to it you know and and i thought that analogy was just like really powerful and it just made me realize like dude that is like exactly why people just don't get it like right. that's the way we feel as colored people we're left-handed and we were born into a left-handed world. A right-handed like, world. Or sorry, a right-handed yeah. world. We're born into a right-handed world. Uh -huh. Meaning that we just don't have the same opportunities mm -hmm. in sense. Because when you think about it, how many black CEOs are here? Like there's not Dude, what is it, only five black billionaires in the in exactly. the country? Right. Of dreams? Mm. Yeah, and it's in America and I and I love America. I, I'm born in America. I'm not not knocking America at all, right? But it just goes to show you that we we still to this day we still don't have the opportunity we still don't have you know the rights and there are very very talented you know people of color like that should should be in those positions but let's look back why haven't they gotten those positions maybe it's because of it could be because of you know timing it could be but when it all there's a lot of excuses to it. Yeah. there are there's a lot of excuses that are yeah. given right but it just doesn't it's uncalled for because we should have it doesn't even have to be black you know people of color that are in those positions but diversity mm -hmm. you know that's what america is supposed to be and i just feel like till this day we still don't get that recognition of that. well a lot of it goes to conditioning and what you learn your own biases like i said the fact that slavery and civil rights aren't far removed mm -hmm. neither is racism so right. it's like I understand time, and I I've been telling uh, my wife and my dad because I, I honestly think thirty years from now racism will be a crime. Like there's no ifs ands or buts about right. it. Right. I mean, they're trying. People are trying. Our leaders. They're getting them are trying. out of here, right? Now. Yeah, they're trying. <laughs> it's just another thing is I think like you know they're trying to. They were talking about you know working and focusing on the training of police officers, and I just feel like all cops aren't bad definitely yeah but you know there's a one that spoils it for a lot of people you know it's hard to trust cops you don't know if they're coming to really de-escalate a situation they're really coming to help you you don't know they have a preconceived notion about you you don't know more than likely they do exactly yeah you feel me? Like, it's hard i mean i just think it's like hard to navigate it's like neither side there's really any trust and that's a problem you know what i'm saying like it it's really challenging it's kind of hard like you don't know how to go about it it's like should i can like i don't know it's weird like i was telling jordan other like he and i had like a heated discussion because believe it or not like we have different views on certain things and yeah, i have i mean i have police i have friends i have family that are police mm -hmm. officers so i try to kind of like look at that viewpoint of it well, but you're checking your own bias and conditioning at that point yeah how often do you think people of authority do that Right, true, sure, right. So yeah. that that's that's what's hard. That's what you, I was you can do it. You mm -hmm. can afford for for to do that. A lot of them save a save somebody in your precinct, shoots and kills somebody. Like it's the same mindset of sports, that's my dog, that's my dog. You yeah. gotta figure this out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you got that family mindset over here to how a lot of people are viewing it, it's like an FU mindset over here. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like all of y'all. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. It's thing, generalization. You know? yeah. Yeah. You're just, and, and that's just how, Dude, that's, that's how we're looked at. If you think about black people of color, black yeah. people, people of color, I mean, if you see. It's a group of us sitting around each other, <laughs> you best believe somebody's staring. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> they don't, like just being honest, you know, it's, that's the simplest thing. Like, for example, back to work. If all of us are at work together, we strategically try to have conversations and then we're like, all right, y'all, we got to stop talking now. Let's go back to our, you know, it's just like, that's what it is. All right. And we look at like cops and, you know, people are like really just like not really effing with cops right now. I mean, just 
But it's like, it's not like you were saying before. It's not necessarily there's good cops or bad cops. There's good black people. There's bad black people that mess it up for us too. Yeah, that's but that's how we're looked at. Like when you look at a black person, and you, know, you know, it's like, oh, they're they're that type of way. They, you know, they're uneducated. That's not right. That's not true about us. Yeah. Like, in the same thing, the cops, you know, the people are feeling about cops. They should be. You know, uh, cops' lives matter. We're not saying cops' lives don't matter. Right. It, it has nothing Who's to more do with that. At this point. Like, yeah, it's, 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 it's really the simple. same thing That's we're simple. viewed really. at. Let me ask you: You yeah. played sports before, right? Yeah, I played sports. Uh, what sports did you, did you I play? I played. Uh, <laughs> Basketball, football, and I ran track. Did okay. everything. <laughs> right. All American over here. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. <laughs> but playing sports, did, I want to ask both of you guys that actually everybody, like, mm -hmm. y'all play sports, right? And you dance mm -hmm. predominantly. I want right? to talk so to I, about that. Yeah. I actually got a question. We can get it to it. <laughs> because I know from the school I went to, and I ended up transferring, me and my brother transferred. For multiple di different reasons, there's a perception of a black person can only be good if they look this way, mm. right? So um, they made my brother had we had braids and everything. You know, AI was first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he actually cut his hair. We didn't make the team not because we didn't have it. It's because of perception. It's, it's a lot of questions to it, but I ain't gonna even touch it. But I want to ask you guys, uh, essentially, have you ever dealt with systematic ra racism or little innuendos that it's like, yo, what? Uh, what did you just say to me? Yeah. I, I mean, do you want to start that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> 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 but I, I think it's as as well. important yeah. that people think they don't understand the black experience. Yeah. And how we deal with to with it on a day to day basis. I'm not sure I understand. Sorry. I, <laughs> hey, I gotta talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what did you guys experience playing sports or being active dancer? What did you guys experience? Uh oh. I would say for dancing, the simplest thing like um. I'll take a sip. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because I was telling people like I grew up in a predominantly white area i grew up in the suburbs um i'm i hate to say it but like i feel like i grew up not seeing color in a way of like sometimes mm -hmm. like i was always the only black girl but i didn't see that in that way right. you know yeah. like it didn't bother me necessarily until i got older where i was i think i was growing into myself and being more aware um but i made my dance team and i was the only black girl on my dance team for three years until i quit my senior year and then I kind of talked in like my best friend at the time to do it to take my place and she was the only black girl my se our senior year but and then even when I did competition dance for a, a dance company it was like a predominantly white dance company and um, I was telling Jordan like it was the simplest thing and I didn't even realize it but in middle school when I danced we would get our uniform and it came with tights <laughs> and it was flesh skin tight or like tights but it wasn't my color mm -hmm. and it was like and then I was like these don't match me but I wasn't like these don't match me I need some more it was just like these don't match me like did the tights make your legs look they were white no they were white they have some that are for darker Women yeah, now, but they did but they like I was not allowed to wear those. Me either. Like really? I was they told us we weren't allowed to wear like I got called out from people's parents like her tights are different. I'm like, well my skin is also different yeah. than yours. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna have different tights and so they told me I have to wear the same colored tights to look like everybody else. Uh, and there would be times too you know, we have natural hair, curly yes, hair. Yes, hair. Yes. We would have to straighten it or like... I had a perm. I got a relaxer in middle school because because of that. Like, I, I went in and I told mom, like, I used to get a hot comb all the time. I did not have a relaxer until middle school. And I was hair. like, I was like, mom, like, I need to get my hair prepped. Like, yeah. I got to get a relaxer. And she was like, okay, I was, but you can't scratch your hair. Like, she wasn't really against it, but I was asking solely because it was like, if I sweat, my hair's gone. Like, you yeah. know, it's like... 
I gotta be able to, you know, I started wearing weave. Yeah, like, me too. I was like, they said we gotta have a, a slick ponytail. We gotta do this. Yeah. And like, it wasn't until high school, I guess you said I got rebellious when I was like, no, I'm not doing that. In high school, that was the first time I ever received like skin color types in my complexion. Right. And that was because my dance instructor, instructor in high school actually was like, I know I need to order you some separate ones. But like, my mom wasn't a dance mom. Like she wasn't that one that like she didn't, I, we didn't argue not because like we just didn't care it was just like whatever yeah. you know but I mean now look at those pictures and I'm like I look crazy as hell like <laughs> I cannot believe Bro, that we really let me go out like this and I loud <laughs> it like I didn't That's say crazy. anything either it's crazy it was just like simple things like like I was looking at something and people were showing like um ballet shoes and they yeah. were spray painting them like oh. our complexion and it was like yeah ballet shoes come in pink yeah, like they, they don't, don't even make them for. They don't even yeah. bother to make them for like our yeah. complexion. That's so crazy. it's like <laughs> stuff like that, and I was like, I didn't know it, but I'm so aware now, and I'm like, yo, yeah. like, I feel the, I feel the same way. Like from elementary school mm -hmm. to um, middle school, I was in private white schools, even mm -hmm. though I lived in you know around black people in my home. Mm -hmm. My mom sent me to private school, so I never realized what was going on right. until probably my junior year of high school. Yeah, I'm a senior Especially in college, college now. Yeah, I am the I'm on the dance team at UC. I'm the only black girl, like the mm -hmm. only one, mm -hmm. and I I never saw like a problem with it. Like yeah. I kind of accepted it as. This is not the style of dance that black girls. Yeah, do. I feel like I got you catch the yeah. you catch it from them too. Yeah, the black community are like y'all don't be dancing. Da, da, da. I'm yeah, like, I'm like, and I remember oh, I would argue oh, somebody yeah. up and down. And I'm like, there's more of them popping. Da, da, da. Like there's jazz, there's ballet, there's yeah. pop. <laughs> they <laughs> like, right, and they don't know what the heck a jazz is. Right. I'm like, no, like you can do this. And I'm like, so you be doing this shit? Yeah, <laughs> but like I remember it used to hurt my feelings. Like I would be. Like, I would go to bat for that, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't even stand up for myself. Yeah, like, I... That's crazy to me. I think the tight situation was when I realized, like, y'all are a little different here. Like, yeah. I can't have my own skin tone mm -hmm. tights. And I that was the first time I asked my instructor, like, can I do this differently just this mm -hmm. one time? Because it doesn't make sense. Right. And, like, even nowadays just the small i it's like just a lack of knowledge i guess mm -hmm. and they just grew up differently they asked me like when my hair is naturally curly oh, yeah. i dance why don't like, you wash your hair every day yeah or or they'll ask me like that i've been asked before like when are you going to get your hair done for for dance and i was like <laughs> bro nah i, I was like so i have a question <laughs> so you, you you're nice yeah <laughs> no. none of that. No. so i have a question yeah. can you get braids like box braids yeah like or something like i I think now I would be allowed to. I personally don't get them because right. they're heavy for dance, but I've had them before and you know, they ask the stupid questions like what's going on, but even when I like get a sew in, it's still Your like, hair's longer. Yeah, Did you I'm cut like, your hair when you take not, it out. And I'm like, it's like, not funny. Yeah. Like yeah. You, you don't have to say something yeah. every time I like, do that. I just started wearing my hair natural at work mm -hmm. and I've only been at this job official like a year. So I was wearing like protective styles or whatever. So now that I'm wearing my natural out Due to cur the quarantine, um, <laughs> I was like, they were like, "So is your hair that curly?" Yeah. And I was like, "I don't even know how to That's answer that." Like, question. yeah, but then like I had to do something. <laughs> but it's like I can explain it, but you're not gonna get it. Like yeah. it's just like stuff like that. I'm like, I get it. Like y'all, you're curious, so ask. But then it's like to a certain point, one, don't touch my hair though. Like, yeah, don't do it. I don't know. I get. I guess I was always just asked when I was going to get my hair done. It was more like a when are you going to look like everybody else? Right. Yeah. Because you but, know. But that's just going to like our everyday. People really don't understand. Like it's every day. Every day. Like, yeah. Every day. You think that knee on really somebody's neck? Yeah. That's the worst case scenario. Yeah. That's the scenario we're avoiding. That's why we hold our tongue a lot. That's why. Yes. Like I was telling you at work, like when we were working in the same building, I was like, uh, like, but I worked at Lincoln and, you know, the population is typically older white people. Why don't you do this? Why don't you dress like that? I was like, technically, I look better than anybody. <laughs> like, they never but to answer your question from my end, it's, it's a little different for me, honestly, because 
at my high school, it was all black people. Mm-hmm. Uh, my what high community, I, I went to, I'm from Cleveland. Oh, you're from oh, yeah, Cleveland. I'm from Cleveland. <laughs> I, love it. I went to school in Akron, so it's Okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty Cleveland. close, yeah. So um, it was all black people. I probably had like one white person at my school. Mm. Um, right when I got out of uh, high school, I went to Central State. All black Ooh, people there. Yeah, I went there. <laughs> I came to UC. Listen, listen. I came. To, I actually came to UC because um, I, I feel like in the workforce, I'm not going to just be dealing with people like myself. Mm-hmm. I wanted to expose myself uh, with around people who were who were different from me, mm-hmm. honestly. And um, so I, I, I can't say I can't really put my finger on, it, especially with sports, where I, I was like uh, put in, in that type of situation, honestly. But yeah, yeah. And, and, and as far as sports goes, yeah. for me growing up, I was kind of like you guys. Um, predominantly white school, elementary, predominantly white school, middle school, predominantly white school, high school. But it was weird for me because my mom was a teacher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> my mom was the only black te- like in middle school. She taught at middle school. Um, She was, there was only two other black teachers there. Mm -hmm. So she knew a lot of the other teachers and anything that I did, it's obviously going to be, all right, he did this, he did that. But just kind of specifically growing up, you know, I didn't really notice like racism, anything until I really, you know, through the college year, I mean, through the high school year, end of high school, and then the college, I kind of like was aware because I was kind of like I don't know in a way shelter like my mom never let me go out really <laughs> if I didn't have my school work done you know like he would even even in um in summertime like she was like you you you're gonna uh be in the books you know you can't have you know freedom time to go outside until this is done I'm like why? Like, I can like go out here and play with all the other kids. But that you know, goes but to, like, black people got to work twice as hard. Exactly. As and, and I look back on that, yeah. and I do realize, like, that's why she she pushed me that so much for that. Dang, and you then, just made me have an epiphany. <laughs> 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 and I look back. Yeah. But, like, in middle school, like, I had a coach. Um, all the coaches, I believe, from my, what I remember, are, were all white. But I did have a coach there who was, like, you know, uh, you could go play college football. I'm like, I can play college football. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm in middle school. And I, I wasn't thinking like that, right? Mm-hmm. And I had, he, he told me, you know, you could play college football. I'm like, all right, cool. And he always told my mother, like, don't let him be so uh, nice, you know, because to me, my mother always taught me, you got to. You gotta be nice to people. You gotta mm-hmm. smile, and it comes back to me, and it's like, smile. yeah, even in the job, smile. and I, I'll kind of harp on that in a second. Even, but now I look back, and that's why she told me that because because of the way people perceive mm-hmm. you. So that's why people you're are like, big dude you're too. a big dude. Yes, you're like, I that's you how I was in middle school. Not to smile. <laughs> yes, I was telling Jordan that yesterday, and I said I feel like more than ever now, Jordan leaves out that door, and I'm not with him. I'm like on pins and needles. Oh, yeah. I don't have you notice like now I call you all the time. Like if in the time I'm like, are you on your way back? Are you okay? Yeah. And it's like I'm just paranoid. And I'm like, people will look at Jordan. If you don't know Jordan, Jordan is like a teddy bear, okay? He would not hurt a fly. He is like the sweetest person ever. Like you, seriously. You get upset, but Sorry. I think I but, seen you upset once and I was like, Yeah, I can see how Yeah, but then even but like just looking at him like what maybe a police an insecure police officer would be just me anybody insecure really would see him they would be like oh this is a big black guy mm-hmm. and into like just into like be on guard and i'm just like but they don't know you you know what i'm saying so i was telling jordan that and he was just like he was that's when we were having our discussion he was like but you have to understand i'm like i don't want to understand right now because they're not understanding me yeah. so I'm tired of turning another cheek. I'm tired of being the bigger person. I'm, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's hard. That's mm-hmm. another thing that people don't realize. Every day we have to deal with. We can't afford to be belligerent. Yes. We can't afford to be angry. We mm-hmm. can't be, afford none of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because guess what? Then you're going to 
kind of confirm their own stereotype about you. Yeah. So in your case, mm-hmm. it's like even at work, it's like okay, smile. Like you got to. And, yeah. And, and and just just playing sports, you know, like growing up, like. I did have the opportunity to play college football. I did have the opportunity to even at least try out for the NFL, but up of it, you know, being in the locker room, stuff like that. Um, but also just like, I also saw a different side of me, I guess being a person of color, but at the same time being a, considered a football player. Mm-hmm. Because people kind of have that perspective of you. Oh, you play college football, you're this and you're that. And, and every time I walk out the door, I don't care where I'm at. Just because of the stature I'm at, mm-hmm. you know, because of the build I, I have. Oh, did you play football somewhere? Yes. Is it, I mean, it's, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does it ring like I was like, uh, but also just like, there was a time where, plenty of times where downtown um, in Greenville, North Carolina, like, you know, you're, you're like, I don't know if you guys know or not, but football team is going to have a mixture of people, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to have white, black, Mexican, whatever. But to us, since we uh, blood, sweat, and tears every day, like, even if you may have a slight thought of you don't like other people of color, you're going to learn to like people because you're going to be around them every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 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 you grow to just like it reminds me of remember the titans but if you grow with that person you're in the trenches with that person you kind of have a different feeling perspective about them or with them and we were going out one time downtown and you know it was considered i guess like a a predominantly white bar Mm -hmm. right and they weren't letting you know they were letting people in left and right but when we got up there you know, we were like, yeah, all right, let's let's get in. They're like, uh, no, you have baggy jeans. You have baggy jeans. You, you need to have sh- uh, jeans on or shorts, like, or your shirt is too baggy or whatever. And they wouldn't let us in just because of those particular violations. Yeah. But you know, we we knew that that was the what case. Was. You know, because there was people with the same stuff I had on that got in that were white easily. So I didn't start really as like, dang, like, really, it's like that. Like, I play, and to, to me, like, it's like, uh, you're a football player, you know, everybody should accept you, but that's not the case, right? And and I, did, I didn't see that or experience that until I was like, wow, I really opened my eyes to, that's messed up. No lie. Um, so, not too long ago, um, I was I was working at, before I was working at Verizon, I was actually working at uh, B-Dubs, right? Mm-hmm. And... I'm a, I was a server. <laughs> I was a server and a bartender, right? And so we we get off we get off really late, um, like one a.m. Sometimes you gotta clean up. And it was this girl one day, and she was her her ride didn't come, something like that. We we got off too late, whatever, right? So I have a car, so I said I'll take you, um, I'll take you home or whatever. And so on the way to her house, she she stayed like five minutes away from me. So on the way to her house, we saw a bunch of cop cars, um, like they were, I don't know, doing some investigation. We, we rode right through, and then on the way back, um, they, they actually stopped me. Wow. And I had all my windows down, like I was trying to get some air in, I had my music up a little bit, like it was real late, I was just trying to stay up and get right. home, honestly. And like I pulled up right next to the cop, so if I, you know, I like I knew he was right there to me. So if I felt like I was doing something wrong, or mm-hmm. if my radio was too loud or something like that, I would have definitely turned it down. But never hear it there. But so he he reversed. We was at a red light. He reversed behind me and stopped me. Right, and he said, um, he he said, yeah, your music is too loud. Um, he said I shouldn't be able to hear it from. A hundred yards away, and I was getting ready to say, but he wasn't. And he said, "Or if I just hear it, it's too loud, right?" He said, mm-hmm. "Also, you I'm just be right next to you." <laughs> like what else? I, I know. I put, my windows are down. I can put I can put my hand out and touch the car. How close? How, how close we were? And mm-hmm. so he he also said, "And you just you just rolled past a a, a crime scene, so so you about to go to jail." This was his words. Right. And I looked up at him. At first, I was just listening to him. I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm I'm regular. I know how to keep how my keep my feelings. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm cool. 
Because like you said, you, you we can't afford to get we, angry. We really can't afford to show emotion. Yes. How to One move that you interact say, yeah. with a cop. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's I can dumb. tell he was trying to get me there. And I, and you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm like, I didn't know. He said, so be, before I can even finish saying what I, I, I didn't say nothing. I couldn't say anything. He was just coming at me with stuff. And you doing this and you doing that. And you know, and you just drove through a crime scene. I didn't know. So for that, you, you, you about to go to jail. And I looked up at him. I said, I'm about to go to jail. <laughs> so, wow. How did it he actually didn't even ask for my like, license and, and, yeah. and, and stuff yet. Yeah, so he finally said, can I see your license and do you have insurance? Showed him my, my insurance. He said, okay, good. He, he calmed to calm down now. Um, I gave him my license. He went back to the car. I sat in the car. We, we sat there for an hour. It feels like he was poking the bear. Yeah, he what really was. Like, like and at the time, I couldn't tell, but when I sat back and I called my mom and told her, because she at home in Cleveland, mm-hmm. and she and she she let me, she made me see, she's like, wow, like, this could have went really wrong. Like, this could way easily, left. Yeah, had you react. And it shouldn't even be that, because, I mean, who wouldn't react who wouldn't and be like, like this season, yeah. what's going on? You don't even know what yeah. I'm doing. But, but that's not even the end of the story. So, <laughs> oh so, so, he, so he come back to the car, and he said, I can't. You're not going to jail today because you you don't have any uh, any you don't have any record. Anything, yeah. So he automatically assumed, right? You had some- he automatically assumed that that I don't I don't know what was really going on in his head. I still don't. I, I think about this. It sounds like he pretty was having often. a horrible day. And that's what it sounds like. And, and I don't know what he thought about me. I, I really don't. Maybe he thought I was like a, a, a drug dealer or something. I, I really don't know. But why know would what that, he, like, it's just like, but why would that even be something that's crawling across your mind? Why, when, why did you even pull me over? Yeah. yeah. Secondly, that's the my music, because you heard my music? Because you heard my music. Like, yeah. what's, what, what really is the issue? So, when you pulled up to him, was it like window to window, like, type No, of no. So, what happened was, so... So so like this is his car, mm-hmm. and I and I pulled up my car like literally about right there. Cause okay. I, I'm getting ready to turn right. Um. And he's he's get, he's he's like going straight. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to pull right up to him face to face. I mean, uh, it was but just once a natural again, that's, habit. That's how you like, kind of talk. Like, it's right. like nah, bro. Let me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, got, you could be doing nothing, and you still have that bro. feeling. Just to and know. and so and so look, he, he come back. He he gave me he gave me like three tickets. He, I didn't. I didn't have a seatbelt on. Oh, he wow. said. I, 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 uh, I, um. He said I didn't have a seatbelt on. My music was too loud, and I had tinted windows. Right. Shut right. Down. So 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 fine. I said okay. So he get ready. To, he he he's writing these tickets and he's telling me and he's telling me and then he finally look up and he said, Oh, you work at you work at B Dubs. I said, Yeah, I work at B Dubs. I got the shirt and everything on. Right. He said, The one right here on, on Calhoun. I said, Yeah. And then he, he kind of like paused for a minute. And I could tell right then and there. He realized. He, he realized that all of the perceptions that he had, that What's he wrong? thought I was or whatever, it, it was it, it went out the window, right? And so he, he giving me these tickets. And then on the last one, like I said, I, I didn't pay attention to this until I, after I went to court. Yeah. He he flicked that one into the car and it like, and it hit the ground. I didn't go reach for anything. I just said, okay. And so he told me all what, the, what all the tickets was for. Okay, I left or whatever. So I went to court for him because when you go to court, they like they take some some of the funds off or whatever. And so uh, I'm in court, and she said, "Yeah, so we got a ticket for you um, crossing a double line, running a red light, and not having the seatbelt on." I said, "What?" I said, "What?" He all he told me was I didn't have a seatbelt on, and I had tinted windows, and my music was loud. My music was loud was the original uh, initial reason he stopped me. And that wasn't even that wasn't even the ticket. I, I I go and look at the tickets. His handwriting was real messy, so I, I yeah, really could couldn't read it. it. Man, that's but crazy. but just little things like that shows like that that's just a typical traffic stop. And then I can't imagine the fear going through your body when you say you going to jail. It's like, bro, what? <laughs> yeah. I didn't do nothing. What? You got me. see once again, better man than me <laughs> because it's like. I, I have experience, but like my wife is white, right? The way she about that, yeah. the way she reacts to cops is completely different. So we were at her parking or her uh, apartment mm-hmm. complex when we were first dating, and I think I gave her a kiss goodbye, and all of a sudden there's like boom, like like shining on me, right? I already know the deal. 
You know, I mean, you, you about to see, you ain't about to say nothing. Right. So she rolled down the window, the cops um, entering or uh, walking up to us. And then she just started berating the cop. And I'm looking at her like, hey, bro, like <laughs> what are you do doing? That. Like, do that. Yeah. What are you doing? And like, it, that just, the, just that situation, seeing how someone privileged and have that mm. privilege to yeah. talk to a cop. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, let me, where's my tone to a certain decibel? Yeah. Boy, I'm on the tape. Yeah. Boom. So Boom. how did the cop respond when like she was talking? She's like, okay, now calm down. And then I said something, and I, it always feels like the demeanor change changes mm-hmm. to more of a defensive demeanor. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you need my license? Cool. Let me run your name, all that. You know the typical mm-hmm. cop stuff. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at her like, how dare you just, you, you don't understand what this is like yeah. for me. Like, yeah. my heart's like, yeah. pounded. Yeah. Like, I know like, the feeling. Like, 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 and my hand's on the wheel, like, yeah. no, I'm not going to deal with this, like, right now. So, so um, he comes back talks to me like you need to leave like all right cool like i'm ready to get out <laughs> she was like why you gotta leave i i live by the city. why are you still talking bro like <laughs> like why, why are you still talking but i i don't think she understood she, and this yeah. is just going a privilege when people who are white don't understand privilege that's your privilege dude mm-hmm. let me get belligerent at that moment Right, and he he was looking looking at a car and patrolling the area because there's been deaths mm-hmm. and everything. Once again, let me get belligerent. It could be suspicious yeah. if I got belligerent. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, let her do all the talking, sitting there like, bro, just don't don't make fun of him, like <laughs> whatever. Like, don't piss him off because yeah, yeah, then I don't want to be step out the car, sir. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that's that's the fear that us black men dealing with police got to deal with every day. Yeah. And you as a white woman, you don't have to fear that the same way I have to fear. Yeah. Like at all. Like and I, I think that was a wake up call to me. Um I hopefully it was a wake up call after our conversation to her. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you can't do that. Like yeah. Yeah. but even when you're respectful and it shows in many clips and videos, like it just I can still lose my life in this yeah. situation. Right. And that's it shitty part about it yeah like, i'm doing everything i'm supposed to but because somebody else is belligerent i, can lose my life. Yeah. I feel like if i would have did that with that kind boy i think i i i know things would have went straight south for me well you know you would have been a suspect in that crime yeah, yeah. like yeah. you would have been you were the person whatever that got like was whatever it was yeah yeah you were in that neighborhood and, and it's crazy even though i got a even though i got a buffalo wild wing shirt on yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right, like, what you want some wings? I'm willing to open up the store and get you some wings. Like, what are you doing? That's just the thing. Yeah. Like, I've had plenty of inter- interaction with the car, but I guess I've been very, very lucky. Yeah. But there was just one instance in college, man, like, that just every, every time I think about it, it's like, man, it definitely could have been such a different situation. There was, we went to this party, um, and like i guess one of the, the, the one of my teammates he was like at near a dumpster just shooting a bb gun mm. i don't know why like, <laughs> it's like wait why are we doing that in the why first are we place? doing this in the first place <laughs> but you know next thing you know things go south people start leaving okay and I, and I guess i just happened to be like in the wrong place at the wrong time but you know next thing you know like okay i'm leaving with the people i came with and there's SWAT cars that just cart, woo woo woo. They start coming out, and not just like your typical okay. No, they come out with like heavy AK 47s oh, SWAT nice. like the the bullet. And where I'm just like holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it just got real. It just got real for me, like. And then um, you know that we got our hands up, you know, like, and I'm just here. Like, I have no intentions of, like, who he was, like, why he was shooting the BB gun. I have no idea. But they got a call. Like, I guess somebody was like, oh, that we think there's something Someone going shooting. on shooting. Mm-hmm. But it's BB gun. But, hey, I, I get how the perspective could be. But at the same time, it's That's SWAT team. team. They, really they scary. They cuffed us to the ground. Like, I'm in, I'm, like, here in cuffs. Like, a couple other my teammates are right there. And I'm just like, fuck, I'm about to lose my scholarship. 
Like, I'm about to go. For, for, and, but just, Wait, you did I didn't that do one. anything, right? right? But you were just there. Yeah, I was just there. Yeah. In this thought of that, and the scary feeling of that is just, it's scary. Like, we didn't do anything wrong, but just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time in the situation. And that was just bad. But luckily, you know, I don't know how I got home that night, but I, I, I did. I did that. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, at, at the end of the day, like, once again, what if you got loud? Like, I ain't do shit. I ain't do shit. Yeah, like, yeah, you, I, yeah. yeah. it's OV. Like, right. yeah. Yeah. you can't sit there and tell me, especially with everything going on, you can't sit there and tell me something bad won't happen to you. Yeah. Um, have you seen, like, the arrest of, or what is it, that football player, uh, Bennett, I think his last name. I forget. I'm, don't quote me on it, but. Pretty player? It, he's a twin. Both of them play. I can't remember that at the top of my head. But pretty much he got stopped. And he, he even said, like, the power trip aspect of being a cop, like, yes. oh, you think you big and bad, don't you? Right. Yeah. Once you had him in cuff, face down on the ground, oh, you big and bad, like. Mm-hmm. And once again, that's a bad cop. If I if I go file a complaint to that cop, what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. Right. Nothing, not a damn thing. Mm-hmm. Like, They're going to make sure they pull you over again. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, facts. Like, and that's the frustrating part. That's why we're saying Black Lives Matter because at the end of the day, we're not being heard mm-hmm. to the extent we should be. None of this should happen. Like, I, I was talking to my dad, like, and he's military man, mm-hmm. so he's giving me a perspective of like being in the situation. Looking at all the videos, there's no reason, pops. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. but if somebody's scared of you, it's fight or flight reaction, right? Right. Yeah. I'm gonna fire on you before you get the chance. But my thing is like, what, like, how are you approaching a situation already fearful? That's right. the problem in my eyes. Like, it I is. feel like you should not be in any position of holding a gun mm-hmm. if you're gonna be scared. Exactly. Right. Like, Ooh, if you were that scared at all times, dude, stay at home. Like, yeah. Take a desk job. Yeah. Answer the calls. I don't know. Do what you gotta do, but you don't need to have a gun. You get what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. that is not de-escalating a situation. Yeah, right. It's either you know, fear like, or they just feel like they have this crazy amount of power no, you, that they can do whatever they want. You're, to. you're just like us. Like yeah. you're you're yeah. supposed to be helping us, protecting yeah. us. Mm-hmm. Like we can. But they'd rather be powerful. Powerful right? yeah, is this thing. Yeah. I honestly, I I truly, I honestly believe that. Those cops are scared. I do. Oh, they have to be. They have. They, I think it's, it's definitely they, insecurity. Yeah, yeah. they're scared. fearful. Yeah, and that's why I just. I mean, it's so much easier to said than done. But like people are saying, like you know, like the Atlanta cops are walking out. It's like walk out if you really feel like you cannot uphold the protect to serve. Like okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely walk out. But to walk out and to be trying to protest because you're upset that your buddy lost his job for using excessive force. I'm sorry, I'm not there with you. Like. I mean, I, I make it make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. I there's no reason. I, yeah. I, you can't justify a reason unless, like, really, I don't even think there's an unless to be mm-hmm. honest with you. But once again, going back to what you were saying, fearful, it's because if you look at a black man, and I'm, I've been trying to toy with this, like, why, why do they keep on doing it? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. So boom, black man, we're conditioned even from media, mm-hmm. like me. You, media movies right. even movies, going yes. all the way back to when we first have you guys seen the documentary 13 pretty much it explains um like the badge of like back like in that the- that that and once uh once black people were free mm-hmm. you saw a big round of black people and then there was menstrual shows show incriminating a black person mm-hmm. so now we're getting viewed as criminals and it started way back then and mm-hmm. continue. Like it's continue. still prevalent today. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's still like, prevalent today. Like there's so many shows you could just name off like where the main bad guy is a black drug dealer. Yeah. So yes. now you got this perception of a black man. Or even if we're a cop know. in a movie, we're the crooked cop. Oh. Not even gonna touch that. <laughs> but, but like it's this per- perception of a black man like, oh, fearful. I'm fearful for my life. He's probably faster. He's probably stronger than me. Mm-hmm. Once again, if faster. I think you need to that up way. your your physical test or whatever. Get a, if yeah, you can't, get a black if, trainer. If you can't bench a certain amount, get out of here. Like, if you can't run a certain distance, get out of here. But going back to what I was saying, um, 
the perception of this black man. So now you think excessive force. Oh, he's big. He, he'd be all right. Yeah. No, yeah. he'd be all right because one, once again, I I think a lot of things in people's mind is black people physically. Um, we're strong. We're strong. We can take, we it. Can take yeah. it. Yeah. Type thing. Whereas, but the perception of that is because of slavery. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. We yes. we yeah. were the ones online. We were yeah. the out there pulling so it's just yeah, years yeah. of conditioning like, exactly. mm-hmm. yeah. and at this point like the only way to me that it gets better is the change of heart and question your own biases and mm-hmm. conditioning right. I, I mean just be honest I, I was talking at a protest to one of the chiefs and um, I also study psychology so I okay. body, body language and everything mm-hmm. yeah. and one question yeah. my favorite question to ask people who like my best friend's black. I don't care about uh, what in your head picture a criminal. What does he look like? Don't tell me. They smile. Yeah, because yeah. you know what you're picturing right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. And you see my point at that moment. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's that condition, that perception of a black man has not changed yeah. these whole years. With everything we're doing, like good. It's like, come on, like yeah. we got a black president. Like what what yeah. else we need exactly. to do? Like, right. It's a yeah. conditioning. That's a good one. That's a good emphasis. Yeah, bro. I think along with the perceptions, for some reason, it's like police and sometimes white people too. When stuff like this happens, they jump in defense mode like immediately. Mm-hmm. So there was a situation in in Columbus where two Westerville, yeah, Westerville, no, Whitehall, one of the two police officers got shot. They um got called out and two men I still don't we I don't know if they know or not but two men killed two police officers on, officers on the scene of where they got caught up to there's no crime or anything they just kind of lured them there got shot one thing I find interesting is that everybody was mourning the loss of the police officers even black people and the reason they got shot was because I think during the time it was the Sandra Bland situation there. Oh, so, so it was like that happened. Mm-hmm. And that's around the time when Blue Lives Matter became a big thing mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Because even us as black people agree like nobody needs to lose their life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Especially definitely. Like, have a conversation. But it's bro. it's interesting that when a cop kills another black person that when we go out to It has to be pro- justified. Yeah, it's justified and no, everybody's finding an excuse for why it's okay. Perfect example. Yeah. The first thing they did was dig into George Floyd's background for no reason. And that we're going back to, to him, him being being in, being in prison because of what cocaine charges, armed robbery. My thing is this: I don't give a damn what Not he did. That in that pass. moment, he did nothing to be killed right. in broad daylight in front of people, and then for the. I mean, it's sad to say, but like. Will Smith said, racism isn't getting worse, racism is getting filmed, it's yeah. getting recorded. Yeah. It's like, it's everywhere. You can't go anywhere without seeing that video, that picture. You couldn't get it out of your head. Yeah. It was just like, yes, like, get the word out. And I think my friend was when she shared it, was like, we can remember him and commemorate him without showing his picture. But it's just like, but it, yeah, I don't know, it's just, once you see it, you can't unsee it. You yeah. cannot. And then That's it goes true. back and just says, like, why are y'all even right. trying to, like, what, the purpose of telling me his past, what was that purpose? Yeah. yeah. It, it was like a slap in the face. Exactly. Credit, it was credit, like, credit, the, credit, answer, credit, the only credit. answer is you're trying to justify it. Yeah. Justify so right. you have people. It's wrong, so you're jumping in defense right. like immediately. And then you have people, that's all that every, the naysayers need. All the people that are like, Black Lives Matter, it's all, all the, all, all my lives matter, all they need, that's all they need. They yeah. grab onto that and they're like, well, he had a criminal oh, background. So he did it up. Right. So you're telling me your son that's been strung out on coke for 20 years, now he's clean now for I, okay, six I months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that now he's clean for six months. Now because 20 years prior, he was a drug addict. He deserves to die the same way. I bet the answer will be no. Right. Yeah. No. It's just, it's crazy the how the response is, just even compared to that specific situation in Westerville, we all were saying that we weren't even justifying it. We were like, yeah, all cops can be bad, you know, Mm -hmm. but nobody deserves to die. But yet they're still killing us and we, and they're finding a way to justify it and jump in defense. Yeah. And get away with it. It's crazy. It. Get away with oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then it gets yeah. pushed under the swap under the Oh, like, like nothing ever happened. Yeah. I think my question, like, for you guys is just, like, um, something else, like, we had jotted down was, 
do you have expectations for your non-black friends? Mm. Um, and I get, I think it's like a blurred line because I do. You know, blurred about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so enjoy like this is the first time in my life, like I told y'all, I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood. So I had white friends. Like there were white people, absolutely I consider friends. We've only been in Ohio for a year now, so I honestly can say I don't have any white friends. For the first time ever, I don't. But if I did, like, yes, I have people I work with that I may communicate with, and I think they're cool, but outside of work, I've never hung out with them. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I feel like if I did, absolutely, I'm going to be asking you questions like, why you ain't posting nothing? How do you feel about it? Because, you know, like, not saying anything sends a message. You know, and then there's, like, people saying, like, well, I don't know what to say. I may say something wrong. It doesn't matter. You posting something and just being, like, I mean, just reposting something. Some, yeah. The message is already typed up for you. Reposting and just be like, I stand with it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I follow, like, I have a lot of classmates that are bloggers that are in, like, the beauty and everything. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were posting about, like, you know, the beauty uh, makeup companies are like, okay, y'all are making all these posts. I need to see what does your executive board look like? You know, so like there were, I think like um, Jackie Yana was one of them was like, I'm giving you 72 hours to release what it is. And you, the amount of people they are like, oh, well, I can't remember how they worded it, but they were like, they don't actually have a board, but it's I made of like 6% of, they didn't say, they said non-black. I mean, they were like, they weren't necessarily just black, but there was like other ethnicities. People of color. Yeah, people of color. So I was just like, hmm still not good enough you know yeah. it's just i don't know it's i i mean i don't know i feel like if i have a friend if i have a friend i like i still enjoy it. i need to know that if any given day we're in a situation and a cop or racist person approaches us and they say something i need to know you're going just as hard as i am like you know what i'm saying because right. if we go to my neighborhood or whatever you want to call it yeah. and someone is attacking you because you're white i'm gonna have your back exactly. like you're my friend you're with me so I need to know that you're going to be brave because you posting it is being brave. Because you probably have more white followers than I do if you're white, just being honest. Yeah. So you're like you posting it, you're telling your other followers like, hey, that's not right. Like, it's not okay. I stand with them. You can repost about just donating, sign petitions. There's plenty of things that you can do. Ask questions. Acknowledge that white privilege is something, for one. And use your white privilege for good. You know what I'm saying? Like, go out there and protest. I'm not saying you got to loot and riot, but just go out there and peaceful protest. Go out there and educate yourself. Share articles that you've seen. You know, like... Stop reading headlines, bro. Yeah, like, <laughs> just do something and use your white privilege for good. And I feel like the day that people start acknowledging that and we really just start going in and, like, coming together, it's crazy to sound, but, like, so simple and cliche, come together, I feel like things will change, like start to actually yeah. change effectively. So to answer your question, mm -hmm. I'm on a team with 25 other white people. Mm -hmm. no, I'm the only black person. So obviously I'm on the team with them when this stuff specifically happened. And I will say that it really like hurt my feelings mm -hmm. when nobody said anything. Like it really hurt my feelings because I feel like I'm just a very loving person. I love my team to death. I would do anything for them. I don't think any of them are bad people right. and I really do ride for them. But it seemed like something that made They're taking me feel- the quiet approach. Yeah, they, they were taking the quiet approach. Nobody wanted to acknowledge it. Nobody wanted to say anything. And it really hurt my feelings to know that y'all have my back. And then it took me basically saying something and like speaking up like, oh, in front of my coach. Yeah, in front of my coaches, in front of everybody, like speaking on it. Then, you know, people are coming out and there's still people who haven't said anything at all. And mm -hmm. that hurts my feelings too. And that's but there, like, no message is a message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are some people who have came to me and they say like and I try to understand it the best way I can, even though I, I, I don't that are like, I don't know exactly what to do, but I thought reaching out to you, my, my one of my close friends, was a start. And I love that, but it's also- It's not enough anymore. Yeah. I had two of, uh, three of my teammates actually go on the front lines with me in protest. That meant mm, literally the entire world to me. And I don't think they realize that even doing that meant a lot to me because you're using your privilege for the right reasons right. now. 
and they would I I try to like take the empowering approach to them but it hurts my feelings too when they don't get really it. get it it's like I'm trying to empower you to use your voice because your voice is probably more powerful than black people's is even right. though this is our you know, problem you know how sad that is just right. what you just said yeah you as a white woman your voice is more powerful than mine yeah really goes to life. show there yeah. is no equality you know like we are not equal yeah. yeah and i think after me you know pouring my heart out to them you know there are some that that got it the but i'm like I, at the same time it's like why did it take me literally breaking down almost in tears in front of you guys right. to even see that that, that, that carried was wrong. weight yeah yeah and now you're and then it's, for me i know me i would be like so i'm not a victim don't look at me it's like like don't look at me it's like oh dang yeah you know, no like, yeah, don't, no we don't she's want crying. your pity like, yeah like no. don't pity me no. don't do me any favors there have been some people who have who i don't know who like come into work or something mm -hmm. stupid and they'll be like sorry about what's happening I'm like, I don't need that. Yeah. But tell, me you, tell me Thank what you're you. doing about it. Yeah. 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 I'm tired of hearing Sorry. I'm sorry, sorry this sorry. happened to somebody that looks like you. Yeah, I was like, okay. So, oh, cool, cool. What you gonna do about it? All right. Oh, you just talk, yeah. get out of my face because you're part of the problem. Yeah, right. right. If, if you're not fix, helping fix the problem, you're part of it to mm -hmm. me. Uh, like, it's right. no really in between. It took me forever to understand that with certain people. I know my wife's friend who is, she's black. I mean, she texts my wife like, hey, I need you to say something. Wife, it's already done. I already sent that. Yeah. Look at my page. Like, mm -hmm. like it, it can't be no omission. To me, right. it's no omission. Unless you don't have to post something, but contact the people that you call your homeboy. Right, yeah. I need to hear, yeah. I need to, like, I need to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I should already know. But you gotta confirm it, honey. Like that's where we're at right now. I need yeah, the confirmation. That's exactly what it is like saying something is is way I don't know. It just means a little bit more than than saying nothing at all when mm -hmm. you're because you're, it makes you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It doesn't have to be public. I I think a yeah. lot of people think it has to be public. No, if I see you standing by me, you didn't say nothing on your social media, and we're at a protest. Perfect. Oh yeah, that's fine. If you yeah. send if if you send me a text message like, hey, I don't really know. I'm not educated on this whole situation but if my eyes are open boom i'm cool with you now if you said nothing at all or you're questioning a person who just died in front of you on video for eight yes. minutes suffering like it's it's you don't it's you're not a type of person that i can educate yeah right. the person i can educate is the person who's willing to have a conversation without yelling who who's knows willing to acknowledge like right. you acknowledge is the first. biggest thing yeah. like if you don't acknowledge your privilege, you, if you don't acknowledge your supremacy, and if you don't acknowledge how this system, this country was made for you by by you, mm -hmm. like that's my problem. Yeah. Like it's acknowledgement it that it exists, mm -hmm. right? So I understand your own experience and your own awareness make your own reality. Like I get that, and my reality might be illusion to you mm -hmm. because you don't have the same experience. I get that, but at the same time. How many more people got to die for you to understand how you see, you see them was going on? Yeah. Right. Does, does it have to be me on that pavement before you like? Exactly. Oh damn. Yeah. Like, like why was, does it got to get to that? Yeah. Point? Like oh my god, he was a, such a nice person. Yeah. No, that doesn't until, matter. Until what a nice until, one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like happens, don't let it be situation. too late. No. Because people hear the word white privilege and don't understand it. And uh, yeah. Can we break it down? Yeah. Bro? Let's do that. Yeah. yeah I've seen people like say a well, little. White privilege, white privilege is the same thing as you saying say that you the N word. I'm like, what? Like, oh, yeah. hold on. What? That's what I'm I've saying. You know, like the Karen thing. They said Karen oh, yeah. is like using the same word. They said it's more powerful than the N word. But yeah, sorry, that's off topic. But, and that's yeah. just like the same word that goes to show you like education. Yeah, like it, that makes no mm -hmm. sense. But um, I had one girl. She was like, I mean, I've worked, ev I've worked hard for everything. I was like, not that privilege, honey. That's a different privilege. But did, yeah, it's, so I guess my my view, my personal view of white privilege, just to make it simple for some people, because let's be honest, you can get really in depth with it. Mm -hmm. It's just comfort. Not saying that your life hasn't been hard, but in, on a macro level, mm -hmm. not a micro, because you can say Will Smith's son is more privileged than yeah. a yeah. white trailer park guy. Exactly. Right. You know, 
but what I'm just saying on a macro level, people don't view you as a threat. Um, people think you're going to pay back their loans. You know, the perception of you. Mm -hmm. And that, not only that, is comfort. You have a comfort whereas, for instance, like I said, when my wife was talking to the police versus me, she had she was comfortable to do that. You work for me type stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That Karen, like, yeah. you work yeah. for me. Whereas, I'm scared to get killed by you type. <laughs> yeah. And you don't have to live in that fear. You don't have to live in fear that somebody's going to judge you because you're angry. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had just recently realized how angry I was and because of how much time from work, from my personal life, I had to push down that anger and frustration mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah. And I and I know I hit a breaking point. I, when I was talking to protests, I just broke down because it's mm -hmm. like, get it, get it. This is your privilege. This is what we need to do about it type thing. Mm -hmm. So it's comfort to me and your own perception isn't as incriminating as perception. Mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in to with us today and have, just having the conversation. We definitely would like for you guys to comment down below, like, and share the video. Make sure that you are having these tough conversations with your family and your loved ones. By the way, we just wanna shout out our buddy over here, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> him and his wife made these shirts. We'll make sure that we're going to link everybody's um, info down below. Make sure you give them a follow as well. Nico has a YouTube channel also. So, yeah. And I think Alex do have a YouTube channel. Oh, Alex does yeah. too. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah. My bad, I know. <laughs> Pretty so, good. Yeah, so we'll make sure we put their information in. Give them a follow. And thanks again. Black Lives Matter.